Hey there, listener. Welcome to the Deep Share Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Rouse, and for the last couple of decades, I've slowly been opening my eyes to a very different world than the one I grew up hearing about. And the more conversations I have with interesting people, the more mystifying this world becomes. So without further ado, let's get deep. We've got science to celebrate! Demons this out! After what, baby? Come on! There is a rebellion in the wind. It will be crushed. Everything I've said is true, it's real. Dinosaur fossils? I'd like to put those here to test our faith. That damn lie, I, I saw them on my own eye! Did I accuse just drop sharply while I was away? We did it illusions, man. None of it is true. I'm not insane! This is mass madness, you maniac! In God's name, you people are the real thing! We are the illusion! Welcome back to the Deep Share. I've got my good friend and host of the Wicked Planet podcast, Ron from New England with me. Ron, how the hell are you, man? I'm doing good, Andy. Thanks for having me on. I know that we've been trying to do this for a long time. Yeah. yeah you, you've, been, you've been pumping out shows left and right. And I'm like, I got to get in there sometime. <laughs> Dude, <sighs> you and I have been on podcasts together and we, we did one of my roundtables together, which was awesome. But yeah, we've never been able to actually sit down and do what you and I do off the air on the air. So right. It's nice. Right. Yeah. Like our quick phone calls that are an hour long. Hell yeah, yeah man. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's great. But uh, yeah, so you just got back from a nice vacation. That must have felt nice. Yeah. You know, it was really good to unplug. Yeah, I, I guess I guess the way to put it. Uh, you know, us podcaster guys, you know, we, we spend a lot of time, you know, not only in our personal life, doing our, obli- you know, taking care of our obligations there, but, you know, we put a lot of time into our shows, you know, and the research and the lining up guests and, and, and people, you know, and, and I, and I'm sure people understand that, that that's a lot of work, but I mean, they just, you know, go on their podcast app and like, oh, they got a new show. Let's listen to it. Right. They, you know, and, and then trying to, you know, uh, let them know, you know, what kind of work goes into it. You know, a lot of work goes into it. And, you know, sometimes we just get exhausted. Yeah. And uh, so I had that trip planned to go off-roading. I'm a big off-roader. I like to be out in the woods. I got a pretty oh, yeah. cool, I got a pretty cool machine. And, uh, and I've got, you know, what do you got? Uh, I got a, a Polaris Razor XP 1000. Ooh, yeah. It's pretty nice. bad. It's pretty badass. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> badass. It's uh. Uh, you could get yourself hurt real quick with it, but I'm pretty good with it. But, uh, but you know, me and my friends, we just, we plan these vacations like way in advance mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, my friends, uh, they're all like electricians uh, or one's a rigger. He's a teamster. Uh, the other one's a, a mechanic for a big construction company, you know? So we all have to work around each other's schedules. So we have to schedule our vacations like way out. Yeah. So th- totally this, th- this last trip, uh, we went up to the wilds of Maine up where there's like, very, like one bar of cell phone service. Nice. Now, if, if you're lucky and uh, uh, kind of, you know, just okay. Wi-Fi and internet at the cabin that we stay at, but it, it was good enough. It was good enough mm-hmm. to, you know, kind of get caught up a little bit, but I was really, you know, you know, it's hard to get out of your mode. Uh, that you're always on of, you know, checking your Instagram feed, seeing what's going on, researching news stories that we get. Like uh, I subscribe to Epic Times, which which is which is really cool, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, checking out news stories and like, oh, man, I wish I could post something about this. So then you try to post and it's just your phone does the sit and spin. Yeah. You know, you know, it does. I was like, you know what? I'm just uh, I'm just going to do this when I get home. I said I was going to unplug and that's what I'm going to do. So yeah. uh, so it's cool. Well, you know, we. Uh, we did a little over 300 miles through the woods, which may not wow. sound a, sound like a lot to the to the listeners, but when you're out on trails, 300 miles is that's a lot of riding. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. But we had a good time. I saw a lot of wildlife. Saw some moose. Saw some deer. Uh, you know, rabbit. I mean, what didn't I see? Uh, <laughs> and, and the weather was awesome. Uh, it was it's just a really good time, you know. And 
But I have to admit, you know, when I got back, I was, I was having a two or three day struggle there trying to get back into the swing of things, you know, getting back on my feeds, getting back to work for the show and things like that. But I'm good. I'm good now. <laughs> I, I, I broke the ice last week with our with our buddy at uh, the New York Patriot podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of got on with him. Uh, yeah. And uh, oh, and he said to say hello. He really likes you a lot. Oh, yeah. And, he's great. Uh, yeah, we talked about you a little bit in, in the show there. So if the mm-hmm. listeners want to go check that out, New York Patriot, he's on Spotify and everywhere. It's just like we are. Yeah, I think you told that story about like kind of pulling my ass out of the gutter, right? Like when I started almost, I had like maybe like three episodes out, not even, I don't even remember how long ago it was, but it was really early on and you yeah. just kind of to you it was like a we were magnetized you know you started reaching out to me and you were like don't you dare quit <laughs> yeah you know i had found your podcast anyways i had i had got on this little bit of a, a train where i would go on instagram and if i saw uh, another podcaster that looked like they had an interesting show or whatever i would follow you yeah and, and this is how basically i've met everybody yeah uh, and uh so then I, you know, I subscribed to your show and you had an episode about an individual that had to go to prison. Oh, yeah. With Dance and Dave from Surviving the System. Surviving the System. OK, that's the one. Shout out and to I, Dave. Yeah. And I listened to that show and it was so interesting. And I'm like, this is a really cool show. And I like your intro music because, you know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a fellow heavy metal guy. And yeah. uh and so I listened to that and I listened to another one. You had a couple of shows. And then one day I was just going through my feed and, and I saw, you know, you uh, had kind of this, like this little discouraged type post. Something. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's when I DM'd you and I said, dude, don't stop now. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, so, so I like, don't, don't you quit, you know? And, and it's cool because, you know, they we hit it right off. Yeah. We hit it right off. And now you've been going like, like, like full, <laughs> Full blast. I feel uh, it. Which, which is good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want a vacation too soon, I think, you know, but yeah. October is going to be a big, big month. There's a lot going on in October. It's going to be oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, when all of the podcast people in our circle were all, they were all saying the same thing. Like October is like always switching. big. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think we're in, I think we got some crazy stuff on the horizon. I mean, I mean, not that we, <laughs> not that we don't have crazy stuff going on now, or uh, or have for the last year and a half. And, and you know, when I've said it on other shows and I'll say it tonight, you know, if it wasn't for this COVID craziness, like none of us would be, would have met each other. None of us would, I mean, I certainly probably wouldn't have been doing this, not to the level that I'm doing it. Right. Uh, because, you know, I was on Dangerous World so many times and with Joe and them at Legit Bad that, then you know ron from new england just kind of blew up and when i <laughs> when i when i did my own show it was like you know it's it's doing okay you know i don't have that many it episodes is, man we love your show everybody oh man yeah dude you know what i'm i'm really happy that people like it uh and i mean it, it, it's just like anything it, it has to evolve and, and and get better you know what i mean i'm, I'm yeah. a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to things like that and you know, and we'll get there, you know, and I'm, and I'm happy for all the listeners uh, that enjoy the show and, and I'm going to be giving them some more content and some, you know, what I would consider better content or whatever, you know, because when you're just starting out, you know, I mean, even though I had kind of a jump start, you know, you still, you still put a lot of thought into what you're going to do your show about, you know, and, and then you have to find the time to research whatever subject you want to talk about, you know, when I talk about subjects, you know, in the beginning that I, that I knew quite a bit about like to begin with. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, so, yeah, so we're going to be, you know, we're going to, we're going to evolve. We're going to get better as we go, but, but I appreciate everybody that's, uh, you know, emailed me with kind words and, you know, and, and uh, encouragement or whatever, you know, uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. I plan on being here for the long haul because I really enjoy doing this. And, you know, and then you get to meet all the cool people like you and everybody else that we've met. Yeah, And, and, that, and that circle gets bigger and bigger, seems like, every week. So Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I yeah. was just talking to a few people earlier today about it. Uh, just, I think it was like a Telegram group and a 
big group of people got added all at once. It was like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> Eventually we'll be the majority and <laughs> just be no, no need to hide. Or no need to yeah. lay low or anything like that. You know? Yeah. You know, doesn't it suck that we have to go like, I mean, in telegram, you know, I'm still learning how it works. And I mean, like, uh, like I saw your post today and I was trying to get on there and respond to it, but for some reason I couldn't. And I just, I'm, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. I got to get back into that, but there's some crazy info on telegram that you're not going to see anywhere else. Yeah. It's just right. all of us podcasters just sharing everything off the cuff. Oh like, yeah. So it's pretty yeah. wild. Hey, you know, and there's a lot of time spent going through some of these stories because there's a lot of people that will, uh, you know, post just stories without even looking into it. Yeah, I kind of like to look into the stories before I do any reposts or anything like that. Mm. But but yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know, you know, it's kind of it's kind of you know, I'm hoping it's not one of those situations where Telegram's just going to get bought out by big tech and going to shut everybody down, and then they'll yeah. just be then they'll just be somebody else. Um, I know we keep playing this game of musical chairs, basically, or I don't know, maybe there's a better analogy for it, but just like hopping from one to the next. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the, it's like, I don't know. I play a lot of video games and in halo, it's like this thing called the flood that just shows up and just it's little bits of matter, just eating everything and consuming air. And eventually they just have to, had to keep, fleeing this horrible species over and over and over again it's just it's like come on everything we touch eventually gets infected by elites deep state cabal whatever you want to call it eventually it all just gets bought out by that totalitarian me 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 little inner child voice mentality that runs our world basically you know what i mean so it's like yeah what's the option you and me have talked about Friggin ham radios a lot like do we get our licenses oh shit but who's running the seat who's running the uh the ham licenses they're just gonna right. shut that down too yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna revert back to smoke signals right yeah man smoke signals and private couriers yeah <laughs> but, and like uh pigeons with notes attached to their yeah their you know feet. you know i mean just look at it like we we're all used to how youtube worked it really works well Mm. right but then but then okay so now you know google is censoring this and that and everybody you know uh google owns you know youtube mm -hmm. and uh so okay so then uh you know bit shoot is out there you know w which works pretty good and then and then rumble showed up like like but these you know it's almost like these platforms like showed up like just a bunch of guys like stayed up late one night ordered a bunch of pizza and uh <laughs> It started coding <laughs> yeah yeah i started putting this thing together and i mean and they're getting better as they go but yeah you know I, but i still i still like to watch videos on youtube and stuff and and as some of the our fellow podcasters that are on youtube but they have to be, careful. be on youtube you know? yeah they have to be careful about what they say you know and mm -hmm. it's just and it just really sucks i mean i haven't you know i'm i'm seriously thinking about starting a youtube page you know for the wicked planet and uh yeah. and, it, and it maybe just have you know certain episodes on there because you know some of the stuff i talk about on my show you know i get pretty militant about it you know and it just Hell takes yeah. a couple of people to report it and next thing you know while well, you're off of youtube right so uh and then and then same thing goes with facebook you know i don't do anything on facebook like i share lost animals right and uh, and I respond to you know some of your posts and some of my other friends' posts, you know, just briefly or whatever. But Instagram is where I do all the stuff. And the, what's what's messed up about that is that Instagram is owned by Facebook. Yeah, but it's almost they like you can, less. It's weird. You can you can get away with a lot more on Instagram, but you know those days might be coming to an end too, right? It's like controlled opposition, perhaps. You know, it's like to those that even us that are completely aware of the ownership and where the money comes from. It's like, it's like, we just ignore that sometimes we're like, Oh, cool. Well, Instagram has all my favorite hashtags ready to go to where Twitter it's like nothing. They've like, they have their whole, they must have like their, their, you know, uh, hashtag uh recommendation shut off or something on most things you know what i mean i don't know there's a big algorithm there but on instagram it's a lot looser so we kind of just like feel like it's a little bit easier to post more on there 
but oh, wow. shit gets taken off of there too. And I don't know, we're, people just are less boisterous about the censorship on Instagram, I think. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, you Facebook's can get in- always the focus or Twitter. Yeah, yeah you can get into an argument with somebody on Instagram just as easy as you can on Facebook, but it just seems like there's a lot less of it going on, right? Yeah. And, uh, but I That's mean, point. But, I, but I had this theory that maybe, well, they, they let us do our thing so they could keep an eye on us. Right, <laughs> controlled opposition. Yeah, yeah they, could, they, could keep, they could keep an eye on us. Uh, see what we're up to and then and then use all those posts against us later if they have to. But, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, how I feel about every app that's like YouTube that's available right on Google Play. Not condemning yeah. any of them, but the just you know use it for what it is. See what it is, see what's going on. You're we're cr- clearly being like corralled in some sort of fashion. Now, yeah. granted that's a, that's a good way to put it too. Maybe one good perspective to have in response to that is okay fuck it we're fine that's fine they think they're corralling us that's a bad idea (laughs) hey you know you have to admit that instagram is the mecca for podcasters people with youtube channels uh and and things like that i mean that's where everybody is i mean i don't do much on twitter either i mean i never really got a hang of the hang of twitter you know i i mean i just I mean, it's okay. You know, I follow people on Twitter and this and that. I just, I have no, no desire to even check it on a daily basis. I just don't, mm-hmm. you know, but, but that's all right. I seem to get my message out pretty good on Instagram. So I'm just going to go yeah. with that for now. Yeah. yeah. Instagram works for now. You know, we'll do, we just, yeah. we all, like I said, we're just hopping from one, one little Island to the next as, as they get, you know, flooded. <laughs> so yeah. well, Gab, Gab is another one that people kind of fled too. Mm-hmm. You know, and what was the other one? Parlor. Everybody was going to Parlor. Everybody was going to Parlor. All of a sudden now Parlor is not available. And I would like to know the percentage of people that actually went back to Parlor because I know I didn't. I never Uh, even went to begin with, honestly. Well, no, I did. I did to check it out. You know, everybody's telling me, oh, you got to go check out Parlor. They don't censor anything over there, whatever. Well, Well, they didn't do any individual censoring. They just censored the whole platform. (laughs) <laughs> and got rid of it right so so that, it had to so be the scapegoat saying. well that's what i'm saying it's similar to what you said like they just corralled everybody over there all the conservatives mm-hmm. and stuff like that hey listen but, i'm an independent i'm an independent i consider myself more of a libertarian slash independent than i do republican or uh democrat but you know we got this freaked up two-party system that really needs to go right yeah. Yeah, it needs to go. They need well, because it's just they, two they wings just, to the same bird. It's just yeah, one it's the system, same. You know, it's just the same shit. They don't get anything done down there in Washington, like at all. Yeah, and uh, and it's whoever controls the House, whoever controls the Senate. You know, come on, it's just the biggest bunch of bullshit going down there, and, and they, they 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 take our money and they give us nothing in return. You know, and, and remember what one of the basis when they said it was. Uh, taxation without representation Mm -hmm. well i'm sorry to say that we're there we've been there right our representatives that that's what the word representative is right like you're supposed to represent the people in your district like the people that voted you in to represent your district but you're not coming back to your district and asking your constituents what they think about a particular situation nah because you don't give a shit no not at all. Because you're just going to do whatever, whatever Pelosi or Schumer, uh, and, and I mean, and there's plenty on the Republican side of the same thing. Mm-hmm. They're going to do whatever the higher ups tell them to do. It's just, it's like fucking high school. Yeah, and it doesn't even yeah. have to be orders or commands. It can actually just be natural incentive with the way the system flows in an upward fashion. Oh yeah, you, know, you want the, some insider trading information? Oh, just if you want to just here. be successful, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the same yeah. goes for the scientists and the virologists and anybody else that holds credentials in a system that's been governed or at least controlled, you know, like all these institutions. So it's you know, they're just towing the line out of the need for their careers, you know. Yeah. I've got a stupid friggin not a mask, but like a neck thing at work again. All of a sudden, my city has uh, got that shit now. It's like, 
what the hell? It's back. Oh, is it a city, man- is it a city yep. mandate now? Yeah, for masks again. It's just it's it's just going around in circles. It's ridiculous, yeah. you know. Hey, you know, you know, New Hampshire is the only state in New England that's fighting against any of these mandates. Yes, the indeed. Only, the only state out of six states. Only one man. Yeah, that's fighting that's against where my any eyes of it. Are. I've been. Yeah. I mean, of course, I've talked about New Hampshire a couple of times, but that's my home away from home already anyway. I mean, it's, I go mountain climbing up there all the time. I mean, that's my, that's my place. So, so the idea now to head there with the free staters, I think that's, I think that's a good idea. That's kind of my trajectory. Yeah. You know, uh, and I've said this before too, like, like, like New Hampshire is the live free or die state. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and in a way, you know, I mean, I've been here like basically my whole life uh, and I've seen, though, how it's changed over the last just 20 years or 25 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they really there's a lot of things that are cool about New Hampshire and there's a lot of things that they really just need to fix. Mm-hmm. Like, like the number one problem I have is is how we fund the schools in New Hampshire and it's through property tax. So our property tax goes up and up and up. We just had reevaluation in my town and the average increase in valuation for everybody's house is about 30%. Mm-hmm. What do you think that's going to do to your tax bill? Yeah, that's yeah, it's crazy. But but we don't have state income tax. We don't have a sales tax. We got really cheap alcohol here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the, the state runs it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can open carry, uh, you can conceal carry, no permits, no helmets, no seatbelts. I mean, so so it is a freer state for sure, mm-hmm. uh, even than some of our surrounding states who you would think would be like Vermont and Maine. I mean, you can right. do a lot of that stuff there, too, but they, they've got, you know, you know, maybe their property tax isn't as high as ours, but they got all these other taxes. So I guess it's all relative. Could be, yeah. yeah. I mean, it depends on where you are in those. St- like, but, but it's but it's pretty cool here. It's pretty cool here. I'm not gonna lie. Hell yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you're talking about Maine, like where you went for vacation, the uh, way up that way, because you were like further north than Baxter State Park, weren't you? I was like north of even Moosehead Lake. Holy shit! Yeah, so you yeah. were way up there. Or, where, or, like, or, or, most of the yeah. time, nothing. No one gives a damn what's going. Like. That is open country up there, like right near Canada, basically. Well, it, well, well, we were in Jackman, which is the border. Mm-hmm. But when you're <laughs> in the town, when you're in the town of Jackman, it's a 40, 40 mile drive and it's still Jackman. Holy crap. And so, you know, and they I've have never t- been up that far. Baxter's as far as I've ever gone. man. Oh, I want to check that out. It's beautiful up there. And here's the deal, right? Heading up on 95. Okay, so you head up 95, and then you get off of 95 to get on the route that takes you to through Skowhegan, uh, which is a pretty good-sized town, and uh, uh, and then you go directly to Jackman. It's like it's 80 miles. Like, it's 80 miles from civilization to where yeah. we go. <laughs> That's awesome. And then from there, it's another 40 miles to the Canadian border. But uh, But the whole time we were up there, I saw one state trooper – in Maine on 95 uh, blew by us, like probably doing a hundred at least. Mm. Well, he had to be, cause I was doing 80 and I thought he was stopping me. <laughs> like, like I'm doing, I'm doing 80 with my truck and my trailer and two machines on the back. Didn't even blink an eye at me. Didn't That's even blink nuts. an eye at me. He blew by <laughs> me. And I, he had to be chasing something or something was going on, like on the next exit or whatever. But point is, is when I was in Jackman, the only thing you see up there is Border Patrol. That's it. Mm. And they don't have yeah. anything to do because nobody's coming into the country. Right. It's all right? on lockdown up yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So these towns yeah. kind of police themselves. Yeah, that's pretty wild. That's which, awesome. is a, which is a pretty cool setup. They said, yeah, we have a cop here, uh, a state cop that has to come here once every two weeks just to show his face. Just to check on things. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like the setup for a horror movie. That's where like the he shows up and like six people are ripped apart by werewolves. 
Yeah. Sounds like a good one for that area of the world. Well, too. I'll tell you what. <laughs> There's some creepy shit up there. There is some, I had a, there is some creepy stuff that happens in Maine. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, yeah. in New Hampshire, too, man. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I've had uh, the White Mountains. We talked about like uh, I, I climb up there, man. That's apparently a UFO hotspot. And oh, yeah. yeah. Turns out, you know, I ended up having a, a like a sighting of something. And uh, in the same night, I had a encounter with we which i i kind of was i don't know i'm torn if it was a bear or not because if it was a bear it wouldn't make any sense because it was like seven eight feet tall at least maybe yeah, more dude. and so, in new hampshire we got like six foot bears five foot bears you know the little black bears we have some big black bears here because mm. i know because i got an old black bear dude that hangs out behind my house oh really and he's, he's a big tall. boy and he's tall when he stands up because yeah. he can reach up to the highest bird feeder I have. And I'm almost six foot and I have to get on like not the top rung, but probably two from the top to reach up and put seed in the bird feeder. Oh, damn. I am not joking. And he can reach up there and rip that thing down. I've had to fix it twice this year. Of course, they tell everybody, oh, bring your bird feeders in. You know, fuck that. <laughs> bird, the birds are going to eat, too. The bear doesn't scare me. You know, right. bears don't, the bears don't scare me. You know, I mean, I, he's, he's, he's like 10 feet off the corner of my deck. You know, we were sitting out there dr- having uh, burgers and drinks, me and some buddies one night. And I said, oh, we have a visitor. And my buddy, he was like, like, like really rattled. He goes, yeah. holy shit. He goes, holy shit, Ron. That's a big bear. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, don't worry about him. He goes, what do you mean? Don't worry about him. I said, he's fine. He's going to walk out the trail. He's going to go up there. And, and, and in 20 minutes, he's going to be in the neighborhood uh, you know, on the other side of the woods there. Uh, and sure enough, that's where he ended up. He got like, he's got some horses up there. He likes to go visit. Oh, jeez. He's just like uh, your but buddy. I, he just hangs but out. He, he doesn't bother me. That's awesome. He doesn't bother I me. I mean, yeah. My yeah, wife would so, be terrified, but she'd learn yeah. to live with it. She'd be yeah. friends with them eventually. Yeah. She likes nature yeah. and stuff. Yeah. The only <laughs> thing you'd have to be concerned about is if they get too friendly and they try to come up on your deck. Yeah, that would. And, cool. and then they try to get in your house because yeah. they will, because they will. They want your but, food. Uh, but I've never had that problem. I've had to chase them off a few times. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, moose, but, though, on the other hand, man, like they're oh, the real yeah. threat up there. You have a bad run in with a moose. Because I've seen yeah. one up close and they they are big. Yeah, they're really big. Like when we were up in Maine and we ran it, we call I call them bullwinkles. That's where I like, run into like, them. Like like uh we were uh not really flying down the trail, but we were probably doing 25. Which doesn't sound very fast. It's a lot on a Polaris. But I'll tell you what, you strap in my machine with me, and I'll take you at 35 or 40 miles an hour, and you will be begging me to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Because these are not roads that we're driving on. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so anyways, so we so we're coming up on this trail. Sure enough, and, and it's rutting season up there, right? Oh God, it's rutting season right now. So you don't want to piss off a bullwinkle when he's trying to get laid. No. So we come up, and then there's this bullwinkle with a cow with him, and they're just walking down the trail. And I'm like, "Woo!" I stop quick, and I just idle. I just sit there, and you you don't mess with a moose no. uh, and here's the other thing you're not supposed to chase a moose because a moose will run until it has a heart attack and dies and, and, and that's what pisses me off when snowmobilers do that they like think it's funny to chase a moose dude that's not cool don't do it yeah that's terrible. But, like i want to say it's a pretty big fine if you get caught doing it but anyways they stopped he turned around and he looked at me and i'm like oh, oh boy Please don't come this way. <laughs> and, you know, he just stood there and watched me for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. And uh, and I'm like, you know, because I got four other machines behind me. Yeah, like, yeah. can we all go into reverse in unison here? Because there's no way to pull off. You can't get off the trail. No. So, so anyways, uh, no, he turned around and walked off. He was cool. And I gave it about five minutes to yeah, let him. Yeah kind of get way ahead of me and and they must have went off the trail because i just i just putted i just putted up to where he was and once i figured out he was gone and we, we booked it from that point 
Yeah, but, they're no joke, man. I've had but, I had a run in in Maine as well with a female where my friend and I were just about thirty feet away from a lake up near up in Baxter State Park. My buddy was fishing, and uh, we just went off about thirty feet. I can't remember what we were going to get, but all of a sudden we heard we felt these big footsteps, and there she was just coming right. We thought at us, she was just heading out to the water you know but we were right in her way so we were like shit, shit, shit and booked it back out to the water ran up on the rock where my buddy was fishing he's like catching like bass after bass after bass didn't doesn't even notice the moose at all comes right out and just like she chills and sunbathes for like 20 minutes trying to get the attention of the big buck that was out out in the the middle of the lake and he was huge and we're just like please don't attract him over here it was yeah. intimidating as hell like my oh god <laughs> well you know uh like people see pictures of moose right and until you see one in person it's hard it's hard to explain to people just how big a moose is yeah. now you know how tall a, like an american quarter horse is right What's or a quarter, a, a quarter horse. A quarter horse would be like a Palomino or Appaloosa okay. or, you know, just standard horse. They're, they're actually called quarter horses. And then you have your uh, Arabians, which are like your thoroughbreds. And they, I call them Arabians. They call them thoroughbreds. You know, like mm-hmm. your racehorses, right? A moose is taller than that. Oh, yeah. So you see how big a horse is. Okay, a moose is bigger. Like maybe a small cow moose might be the same size of a horse, but maybe a big to... Clydesdale. Yeah, well there you go. There's that's a... what I'm thinking. Like the Budweiser, or, the old yeah, school Budweiser. Yeah, a Clydesdale, a Belgian, or a uh, Percheron. You know, something like that. Like real big draft horses. Yeah. You know, you know, a moose isn't that like stout, but it's as tall as that. I mean, they're they're just absolutely huge. I mean. When people hit moose with cars here, like, like your your probability of getting killed is very high. Oh yeah, I you passed know, by one in New Hampshire with like right on the side of the road at like nine o'clock at night. Like, thank God he was just on the side of the road because yeah. I was in an SUV and it still would have been completely mangled. Oh yeah, because their span, like their their antlers, can get out to like seven feet in diameter. I mean, you know, it's nuts. They're yeah, crazy yeah. huge. Okay, so the thing about the moose is that they're they're really tall legs. Yeah, yeah. They and, look and, awkward. And, <laughs> and so what happens is if you hit a moose in the road, you just take his legs out from under him and he comes over the hood and he comes into your car. Yeah. And that's where people get hurt. And unfortunately, the moose has to, if he doesn't die right there, they, they have to shoot him when they get there, which really sucks. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was really cool. Hey, do you want to hear about something that happened that was, you know, we were talking about freaky stuff? Sure. Like, like you're talking about this encounter that you had. Uh, you know, we had the New Hampshire Sasquatch guy on uh, on the show, like, uh, you know, a long time ago now at this point. Mm-hmm. We talked about Sasquatch sightings in New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that there's a fair amount of Sasquatch in New Hampshire and, and, uh, and tons of them in Maine. You know, you know, and I know people laugh at me. Oh, no, it's not real. Have you ever seen one? Have you ever seen a carcass in the woods? I, dude, have you ever seen a bear carcass in the woods? <laughs> have you ever seen a, a deer carcass in the wood? No. Right. So. So anyways, uh, so up in the mountains in New Hampshire, you know, uh, there's been a lot of Sasquatch activity up there, even even credible accounts that have made it onto Sasquatch Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Wes, you know, it, to Wes yeah, yeah. And, and Wes kind of, you know, looks into these encounters before he agrees to have them on the show. Right. So in lots of them in Maine, because, you know, up in Maine, you know, pot is their cash crop up there. Yeah. You know, their laws are a little bit more lax up there. And not only that, there's hardly any cops, right? Right. So there, there was a lot of encounters uh, of people that would go to their grow patches and uh, and have encounters with Sasquatch and just end up just abandoning their crop. <laughs> like, screw this, I'm not coming back, right? So so that stuff is going on. But, but, but have you ever heard stories about uh, lights in the woods and strange lights and things like that? I love that you mentioned that because so that was part of my encounter. 
So okay. my friend and I, let me just tell the story real quick because this okay. is cool. And also like you mentioned Sasquatch Chronicles. I told this story on Sasquatch Chronicles like three, four years ago. Oh, cool. A long time ago. Uh, Wes is a, such an awesome guy. He's a great host. He's been running that show for so long and he does a superb, it's superb job with it. One of my favorites. One of my if favorites. Anybody, for sure. If anybody's skeptical and like, oh my God, these guys are talking about Sasquatch now really like seriously, like he does a fantastic job check out Sasquatch Chronicles. But anyway, um, yeah, so we got up to New Hampshire. We're pulling up. We're trying to get to our parking lot, you know, at the trailhead to go climbing. And it's late at night. That's usually how we rocked it. We just show up late at night and spend the whole weekend. Um, so we got up there and I thought I was seeing a big, tall light in the parking lot. And then when we got into the parking lot, like, I don't know, a couple of minutes, a couple of months later, we park and everything. I get out, I'm stretching and everything. And I just realized there's no, there's no light. There's no tall light or anything. And this thing was huge. It was like a big dome light. Like you see it like a mall parking lot. And I even thought it was weird to begin with because New Hampshire trailheads don't have lights like that anyway. But I, that was my first thought. And then it just wasn't there. So I concluded that I had to have seen something bizarre that was right there and then just gone so who knows what that was but that was the same night that i had this encounter with maybe a tall bear but it felt a little too i don't know it was weird because usually bears leave us alone when we're hiking even at night they leave us uh -huh. alone um but this one because we did think it was a bear at first and my friend noticed it first and he was like do you see those do you see those eyes down there and uh, I was like, yeah, he said, I've been seeing it for a while. And so, all right, let's just pick up the pace. So we did, we did. And eventually there was a point where the trail we were on has like a loop around to the other side, a different parking lot or whatever. And this set of eyes and these breaking of branches started coming up that direction, almost like to cut us off. It felt like. And the thing is, is it wasn't until I started listening to Wes's show and hearing the constant mention of cracking branches and being a telltale sign. Now, looking back at that encounter over the years, that's what made me go on that show and go, oh, my God, I think I might have seen something, you know, because we stood up tall when it got up to us because it literally caught up, uh, caught up with us in the trail and. I don't know. It was behind it, like a little pine tree and uh, it made some deep noise. And my friend and I just kind of yelled at it like, Hey, cause we thought it was a bear and it stood up or got closer or something. It appeared to us more and it was very tall, but we didn't have our lights on. And I don't know, man, it just, it had a presence to it that was really off. And my friend, my idiot friend did something really odd he just started making ape noises at it he started going ooh, 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 and that's when it like got real loud it did some sort of guttural growl i guess but it didn't sound like a bear that i've ever heard and yeah that's when i just like gave this horrible loud yell this death metal groan and he joined me and it finally just like disappeared it wasn't there anymore but it just it felt very weird that's all i can say about it i'm yeah. kind of like having a brain fart for like some of the more finer details but we did sleep on the very edge of a cliff with our campfire behind us facing the woods that night so like nothing yeah can us. yeah you know a couple interesting points you make right so in a lot of the encounters that you hear about a lot of times there are orbs in strange lights in the woods, and then you have a Sasquatch encounter. Yeah, it's the. They I, I mean, it's it's a it's a common it's a common thread. It, mm -hmm. It's something common. It's like something that happens a lot, right? right. Uh, a bear. The only time a bear is going to stand on its hind legs is if it's trying to reach something, or it'll stand up on its hind legs to smell. So so they could kind of you know, see what's going on. Or like if they're interested in something, they're mm -hmm. trying to figure something out. If they're trying to, cause they don't really see, well, bears see better than they used to believe. But, but anyways, that's the only time a bear is going to stand up. And if a bear stands up, well, he's probably going to be 
six feet tall, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was but, taller, I think, much taller. Yeah. That but, was the problem. But bears don't like like if a bear makes a noise, you're gonna know what it is. Yeah, it's that you're gonna know what's traditional a bear. bear noise. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. not something that you're gonna feel internally, like like with a Sasquatch, uh, like using say inf infrasound or whatever. But but yeah, so that's really interesting because there's been a lot of encounters uh, in the White Mountains, uh, and a lot of the encounters have been with hikers. Yeah, dude. And Wes yeah. told me that uh, he knows a lot of people and people have written into him that didn't want to go on the show. But he said a lot of people contact me from New England because I told him I don't often hear any New Englanders on his show. It's mostly Pacific Northwest, Montana, you know, places like that. Sometimes you got Georgia and Florida in that area with like oh, skunk Kentucky. Ape. Kentucky is a big one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, of course, we got our creatures all over the the myths are everywhere, right? Yeah. Different, you know, we got, what is it that there's one down South that's like a werewolf type thing or something like that. I, the Dover demon or I can't remember, but it's, it's everywhere. It seems it's, you know, but like, I guess a lot of people from around here don't seem to, to want to go on the air and talk about it with him. But he's like, Oh no, no, no. You guys call in all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, people are very hesitant to go on and talk about their encounters. I mean, I mean, they're even hesitant to talk about their encounters to their friends, let alone go on Wes's show, you know, which is, you know, undoubtedly the number one Sasquatch show, like in the world, you know, yeah. I don't think there's, any, there's no question about that uh, mm -hmm. and talk about it. But, but there was a guy that that went on the show that had an encounter in Conway. Uh, and if people want to go on to Wicked Planet and look for the episode that says uh, New Hampshire Sasquatch, in the opening before the intro, I played a 30 second clip of uh, an alleged uh, Sasquatch howling, uh, you know, out in the woods or whatever. And uh, it's and it was actually recorded in Conway. Wow. So, so for people, the listeners, you know, if you're, you know, not around or don't know New Hampshire that well, Conway is is a is a is a big tourist town, uh, and it's and it's up in, up north in New Hampshire, and it's like basically right on the main border. It's where the like bigger can, mountains are. Yeah, that's where the bigger mountains are. Yeah, that's where there's like sections and towns that, like, you have to go through Maine to get to them, and they're still in New Hampshire. <laughs> like the town of Chatham and things like that. When, you know, if it's in the winter time, you can't take them out in roads because they shut them down. And that pisses but, me off all the time, man, because yeah. my friend and I are always trying to find the roads that are open or, or the best routes. Like, in fact, we've had to like snowshoe from one parking lot, like across miles to get to like a trailhead in the winter time. Cause they're like, Hey, if you're r ridiculous enough to climb them in the winter time, have at it, but we're not plowing the shit for you, you know? Yeah, you know, there was a, credit, uh, a credible uh, encounter that had happened on Bear Notch Road. Oh. Uh, and you must be familiar with that. Yes. Uh, Bear Notch Road comes is is a road that cuts off from the Kangamangas Highway. Or Kangamangas, yeah. however they pronounce it or I whatever. I say Kangamangas. I, 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 I Kangamangas. Just, just, we just call it the Kank up here. Yeah, man. So anyway, the Lincoln Woods and all that. Yeah, but Bear Notch, uh, Bear Notch is not maintained in the winter. No, no. Like, like it's gated off, and you can't and you can't travel it in the winter. I think you can by snowmobile, but that's about it. But, What's the other one? Like Tomcat? No, it's. Uh, I feel like Cat is in the name, but I I could be Wildcat, Wildcat Mountain. That one we were so shocked wasn't maintained in the winter time. So it was treacherous trying to get to the trailhead. We're like, screw it. Let's just do this other one. We did isolation instead, which is named appropriately because you have to travel like seven, eight miles to get to the summit. And you're far away from any other trail because like up there in New Hampshire, the trail systems are amazing. I don't know what the other trail systems are like around the country. I only got like a little taste of the Pacific ones, but man, like they're all interconnected, but isolation is isolated and you can't get anywhere near anything else. Yeah. Maybe that's well, where I'll you know, go when it all falls apart. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, we're in the Appalachians here, right? And the Appalachian trail goes through part of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, it ends up in Katahdin. Uh, and actually that's just right on the other side of Moosehead Lake. 
right? Yeah. So, so, so that's how beautiful. Yeah, so that's how far up we were there. I should post some pictures of that on my you Instagram. You need to, man. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, some crazy stuff happens uh, there. But let me tell you a quick story. Please do about a strange light that I saw. Uh, we were we wanted to go down to what's called the Forks. And the Forks is where these uh, rivers all converge. And it's very well known uh, for whitewater rafting uh, up there on the way between Skowhegan and Jackman. It's a town called Forks. And then there's West Forks, uh, Caratuck, a lot of towns like that. Anyways, uh, so we wanted to take a ride down there. And that's about 50 miles one way. So, you know, it's going to be a 100-mile day. And uh, the the only thing, you know, for four-wheeling and off-roading up there, they really don't want you out at night. But uh, sometimes you just can't help it. You know, you get caught or, you, you know, there's nobody's going to do anything if they catch you or whatever. You know, it's just whatever. It is what it is. Uh, so, so, so by the time we were coming back, I want to say we were about – 15 miles from camp and i mean we're out in these desolate trails and we come up and where a trail intersects and it turns into a logging road because you know logging is still huge up there mm -hmm. like like when you're on the logging roads and, and you have permission to ride on the logging roads but but construction vehicles logging company trucks log trucks they all have the right of way right but there's not anybody going to be out there at eight o'clock at night right, right? So now keep in mind, we're about 15 miles out from camp. Now, like, there's nothing out there. And, I, and I'm usually the, the trail captain. I'm usually the lead guy. Uh, apparently, out of all my friends, I'm the one that can read the map the best. <laughs> so, uh, and I remember, you know, everybody says, well, if nothing else, Ron can always get us home. Dude, we never get there's lost, always right? one of you. There's always uh, one. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so we're coming up the trail and we're just putting. I mean, we're doing 20, maybe 25. And, uh, and I look up further in the trail and I see a light coming and I'm like, oh shit. First thing I think game warden, mm. he's maybe out here looking for people poaching deer or poaching moose or whatever. Uh, because a lot of that happens up there when you get up in the sticks Oh yeah. and, uh, and, and I actually, uh, I run with my high beams on and, uh, and I have led lights. I mean, my machine will just light up like a baseball field. I mean, it's really wow. amazing how bright the lights are, right? Uh, so so I'm going a little further. I see the light still coming at me. And I mean, it's bright. But but it didn't dawn on me, but there was only one light. So I was thinking, well, you know, some ATVs only have one headlight that's on the handlebars, you mm -hmm. know, like some older Hondas and some Suzukis and stuff. I mean, my four-wheeler that I ride also, besides my Razor, is a Can-Am. It has headlights like a car. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I am so sure I see this light that I slow right down. I put my low beam on because I don't want to blind whoever it is coming in the other direction. Right. Mm -hmm. So so we're going a little further now. All of a sudden. Now, all of a sudden, the light's not there anymore. So we so we get to where the, where I you know, kind of could guesstimate where the light was. And and I'm looking around to see if there's any side trails or anything. Now, there was a side trail, but we got there so quick after I had stopped and turned on my low beams that even if he was a little ways up that trail, I would have seen the light from his headlight, and I still would have seen taillights. I would have mm -hmm. seen something. We get there, nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. And, and I'm like, all right, what the fuck is this? Because, you know, I'm one of those, you know, what? Yeah. See strange lights in the woods before. <laughs> We're up where this kind of shit happens. Yeah. And I'm looking around and I see nothing. And, and they could not have gone off the trail because, I mean, I mean, how these trails are cut, it's like saplings and bushes and shrubs and trees, like right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have two or three feet on each side of the trail. To where maybe you could pull over and let somebody buy, or say if a truck was coming through, you could let them buy, but but there was none of that going on. It's like it's eight o'clock at night, like mm -hmm. nobody's out logging at eight o'clock at night, right? 
But I'm telling you right now, I saw a light. Man. And when we got to that, it was gone. Sounds I didn't familiar. say anything. You know, it didn't super freak me out because you know, I see freaky stuff all the time. So, so I'm like, okay, whatever. We just keep riding. We made one drink stop in that 15 miles. I didn't say anything. Hmm. We get back to the cabin and we're all just there. We're getting out of our machine, getting all of our gear out, emptying our coolers and whatnot. Excuse me. And I says, I says, was it me or did anybody else see them, them lights coming at us on the trail? My buddy riding behind me didn't because he says, no, I just watch your taillights. That's all I do. Hmm. But the guy riding behind him said, yeah, I saw that. He said, because you stopped to turn on your low beams because I saw your lights cut out. Yeah. He said, and so did I. And we started going slow after that. I said, did you see anything when we got on the other side of where we saw that light? He goes, no, I didn't see anything. I said, okay, so I'm not the only one that saw that. He goes, mm -hmm. no, I saw that. Confirmed. Just a freaky, just a freaky thing. Mm -hmm. Just a freaky thing. Always but just a freaky thing. But it happened again. Oh, no shit. On a trail coming in the other direction. Whoa. We like the next day. Uh, where did we go the next day? Oh, we rode to Moosehead Lake. Beautiful. We went up to a town called Rockwood from from Jack. Oh, yep. And we're coming back and we're on the last stretch, like maybe a half a mile from the turnoff to go to the cabin, which was this really gnarly, nasty trail off the regular trail. And I look up and I go, oh, freaking A, is somebody coming? Because there's really no, I said, I said, well, maybe, you know, we'll speed it up. We'll get to our cutoff before he gets here. Right. Yeah. Same thing. We got to the cutoff and there was nothing. There was no light. It was just, it was just bizarre. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's exactly and, like and, they can't, and there's nowhere they can go. There's absolutely nowhere they can go. Yeah. That's how there's I felt not, about the street light or the parking yeah. lot light. It made yeah. no sense, you know? It was too big yeah. to be just a blip or a lightning bug obscured by something, you know, yeah. Yeah. just made no sense. Yeah. You know, I don't know if the listeners will enjoy those stories, but, but, you know, but to me, it's like, you know, that's kind of an unusual thing to happen. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but, you know, uh, I always, when we're out riding the big joke in my, in my bunch of guys and, and sometimes all the wives go, they go too, but this time it was just a guy's trip. And uh, I always say, well, we didn't see any Sasquatch today. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> and some of them are like, I don't want to see a Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I used to have a friend that anytime we'd go like in a different place, she'd, she'd be like, are these woods werewolf safe? I'm like, I'm not sure. I guess we're going to have to find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, there was a dog man sighting, uh, you know, and the only thing we can describe as dog man is something along the lines of a werewolf, right? right. Generally there, speaking, there was a dog man sighting in Gilmington, New Hampshire, which is just next town up mm. that made it onto Sasquatch Chronicles, oh. a dog man sighting. Yeah. Yeah, Dog yeah, I thought gets that was on there every once in a while. Well, they didn't say where they were, but they made the mistake of saying it was it was near Lake uh, Lock Lake Colony, and Lock Lake Colony is a big housing development <laughs> that's on a man-made lake. No shit. Everybody knows what it. everybody knows where Lock Lake is. Like that lives around here, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. But yeah, Dogman, you know, I would rather meet up with a Sasquatch. Than a dog man because That's they are not sure. they're not one in the same yeah they're not one in the same when you hear stories about the dog man are always a lot more aggressive than a sasquatch is yeah yeah and i know whatever listeners are probably like okay can you guys talk about something can you talk about <laughs> uh politics or something or you the see, reason why i try Andy? try to stay away from it you know i had a great conversation with jay hannan of the uh how to kill a sacred cow podcast oh yeah and we mostly talked about our love for metal music we just we just went off man it was a it was a fun conversation it was definitely not my best uh uh delivery that night because we were just going off our hearts you know it was fun um and i think a lot of that is important in this work you know probably more so than 
constantly repeating all the negative shit, you know? Yeah. It's hard not to. I'm facing yeah. that a lot lately. Like, I, ah, oh, man, I've been on like a negative tear lately and I'm trying to pick it back up, you know, trying to center myself. There's just every once in a while it comes in waves, man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes we have to get off the negativity, you know, and that was part of the whole thing with the unplugging. Uh, it's because I had a stressful, super stressful week leading up to me going away. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of work that had to get, had a lot of obligations that had to be met before I could leave. Uh, I don't like to leave things hanging when I go on vacation. Like I like to have my slate as clean as possible or else I just, I think about it the whole time I'm gone. Right. And that's, that's no fun. Nobody right? wants to come home to a mess. Yeah. Yeah. I always do anyway. So I guess that doesn't matter, but, <laughs> but anyways, uh, but the whole unplugging thing, you know, there was no negativity, you know, I get along great with all my friends that we ride with, uh, we're just all there for the same reason. We want to have a few drinks and eat some good food and be out in the middle of the woods, you know? Uh, yeah. And that's why I say I kind of struggled when I got back uh, thinking about getting back into the swing of things, right? Because there is so much negativity out there and people will focus on the negativity more than they will anything positive. Uh, and, and I encourage people to just stop watching the news. And if you really want to get information, listen to shows like ours, like listen to yeah. Yeah. Listen maybe to not this particular shit. episode. <laughs> well, no, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like, in yeah, general, yeah, I do like, like, cause we're going to give you information. That's probably a little bit more legit than, uh, you know, something you're going to get on the news because, you know, as I said before, we have no agenda because we ain't getting paid by anybody to do this. Right. No. Yeah. No. But, but anyways, but it was really good to unplug. I recommend everybody do it at least once or twice a year. And I think, man, maybe the, the answer to, to having the, the transition back to your, your every day, maybe it's important to just try to do more, maybe smaller, but more frequent bursts of the, uh, maybe not escape. Maybe that's not the greatest word for it, but you know, it's in a way just like, you know, that unplugging that getting away from it all. Uh, and I know that you and I have talked about it. Uh, you, me and Mark have talked about it. You know, we, we want to get more of us new England podcasters together, maybe do some, some cool live things. Like let's go on site to places and do some recordings and things like that. I think that's in our near future. And I think the listeners will appreciate what we can give them for sure. You know, we definitely need to do that. And I had this conversation with my buddy, Matt T mm -hmm. uh, and our buddy, shout Matt, out to Matt, shout out to Matt, uh, go out and check out his new show. The great deception. Uh, yes. He's got three episodes and they're, they're good. Uh, Matt's a he's really kicking good, ass. Yeah. He's doing really good. He's a really knowledgeable guy too. And uh, you know, he's a fan of both here. of our shows. Yeah. We, we definitely, him and I were just talking about that. Hell yeah. So, but I, but I had an idea. We were talking the other day and I says, have you ever heard of the Bridgewater triangle? Oh yes. <laughs> and he's like, no, what is that? And I said, dude, <laughs> and we talked about what you and I talked about. I said, what we got to do, we got to get you, me, Andy, and Mark. Like Jay to Hannahan, start. too. He's, yeah. he's down. He's like, well, yep, hell yeah. <laughs> for, for starters, and we need to go visit the Bridgewater Triangle. I mean, we'd have to make a weekend of it. Yeah. That's but okay. that, know. that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's some documentaries about that out there. You listeners go out, just Google the Bridgewater Triangle. It's in oh, Massachusetts. Yeah. It's in Massachusetts. Uh, and it's the Hockabock Swamp, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the Hockabock Swamp. It's like an hour away. Really weird, bizarre shit happens there, and including Sasquatch sightings. A lot of weird sightings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, UFO sightings, dogman sightings. Spot. It's definitely a hot spot. It's like, I don't know if there's a portal there or what the situation is. But that is an example of what we could do. Yes. We also talked about going to American Stonehenge, yep, which, is in New, New which, is, which is in New Hampshire. Uh, we talked about going to Salem, Mass, uh, the, the witch Salem, mm -hmm. uh, because we have a Salem in New Hampshire as well. But Salem, Mass, to just go there uh, and do some live videos and maybe just kind of walk around and have the history like history is incredible or, there or have like know? a meet and greet with some of our listeners or something like That'd that. Be fun. You know? Hell yeah. yeah. Right around. Yeah. I wish I could say we could do it on like this year on Halloween, but I'm sure, you know, you're a busy man. And even this far away from Halloween, I have like everything booked solid, like my whole life. 
It's ridiculous. Like, like, <laughs> like we would have to plan that for next year, six months in advance. Yeah, that's how us old people yeah, do Yeah, it. we really would. Uh, I do have a friend that owns a, a, a very cool Mexican restaurant there nice. that is willing to host us anytime we want to go there. That's fantastic. So, so, so we'd be all set with food and drinks. <laughs> There's another place but, in uh, Upton, Massachusetts that's a uh, very likely candidate for a druidic site that could very well align people have reported that there's like certain holes in the caverns that align perfectly on the solstices or equinoxes or something. So that's something I talked to Mark about. We, we should definitely like check these places out. He was stressing, Mark was stressing, you've got to look in your backyard, look in your own backyard first. And sure enough, you know, we all have a lot in wherever we are, you know? Hey, we have that here in New Hampshire. Well, you have it in the Berkshires, too. Ooh. But, you know, anywhere where there's a national park, weird things happen. Yeah, that's a good way you to know, put it. Yeah. People go miss. Hey, people go missing in New Hampshire all the time. Like, yeah. it's not a, it's not on the news. Appalachian Trail. There's a yeah. wacky ship yeah. that goes down. Hey, listen, uh, new development. Speaking of a cold case and uh, missing person, you know, unusual mm -hmm. missing person case. Uh, the Maura Murray case. Are you familiar with that? No. Maura Murray was the college student that came up from Mass to New Hampshire. Uh, I want to say it was in 2004. Very well-known case. There's even several podcasts dedicated to it. Oh, wow. uh, Maggie Furling did a documentary about it. And she's uh, she's a journalist, kind of, kind of a uh, tatted up tatted up type chick, uh, suicide girl type chick, really good looking lady. But anyways, <laughs> very smart, very intelligent and had a really good, I want to say it was like a six part documentary on Maura Murray. And so Maura Murray had, uh, was up near uh, North Haverhill, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. got, uh, it was in the winter, which is the odd thing, which makes it really odd because there was no trace of where she went and uh went off the road with her car and damaged her car basically rendering it you know not drivable and she disappeared and nobody knows where she went right mm -hmm. i mean there was uh houses there was a lot of uh people that they interviewed when they were trying to find her there was no like tracks in the snow uh, i mean just no indication of that she walked off somewhere right mm -hmm. And this is a pretty desolate, desolate road that she was on, right? I mean, there was some houses close by or whatever. But apparently, right when that happened or after, when they were looking for people to interview, the police had discovered that there was several young men that were working at Loon Mountain, which is at the base of the Kangamangas Highway in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Loon Mountain is a huge ski resort. Lots of chalets there, hotels, condos, you name it, right? And they're constantly expanding that, right? So they had interviewed some people to ask them, uh, you know, what they were doing there, uh, if they ever saw this woman, Maura Murray, uh, you know, whatever. What are you doing here in the first place? Oh, well, we're wor working over at Loon Mountain. Okay, whatever. You know, I don't really know the gist of the interview. Uh, I'm going to find out, though, because the interesting uh, update to the case. Uh, and keep in mind, there's millions of theories of what happened to this girl. I mean, they have searched, they've used ground penetrating radar. They've even searched in Canada because it was a theory that she wanted to disappear. You know, I guess she had some personal problems or whatever. Uh, so that led, led some investigators to believe that she might have just went into Canada, uh, changed her identity. Uh, and then they had actually interviewed some people in a bookstore up there near Montreal uh, that said that, uh, oh, yeah, no, she comes in here. and buys books and stuff and and they're like really so they looked into that that never that didn't go anywhere that that, would, that lead was kind of false or whatever mm -hmm. but uh a little over a week ago they were doing more construction at loon mountain and they dug up some human uh bone fragments whoa and we found out uh, actually we found out not really going to say how but we found out before it actually hit the news mm -hmm. Like, like it hit the news that bone fragments were found during construction at Loon Mountain. No mention of Maura Murray, like whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. 
So we got to talk and asking Joe, this guy, this person, talking to them, you know, what's going on with these bone fragments? Because we're thinking, you know, is this, did you dig up some a- ancient burial grounds? Did you dig up uh, whatever? You know what I mean? Mm. You know, because nobody was making any statements as to, you know, how old these bone fragments were, what they possibly could be, if they were male, female, or whatever. They just didn't know at the time, right? But come to find out, they are testing, actively testing the DNA in these bone fragments to see if it is Maura Murray's body. Wow. And, and uh, you know, one part of me wants to hope that it's not her and that she is living up in Montreal under an assumed name, maybe doing better with her life. The other part of me is like, well, maybe if it is her, the family will finally get some closure on this deal yeah. because, you know, they hop on her dad real bad, like almost like he was a suspect. Well, they always have yeah, to. Right? Yeah, but that's horseshit. This guy yeah. lost his daughter. He it's was terrible. nowhere near that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they just really they just really interrogated the shit out of her family or sisters, you know, and relatives and things like that. Just trying to figure out where she was, you know. And I mean, and, and now we're at 2021 and I want to say it was 2004. She disappeared. So, I mean, this has been going on for a while. Uh, maybe not a case that a lot of people in other parts of the country know about, but it's, but it's a case that everybody in New Hampshire is interested in mm. because uh, you know, there's a little bit of a theory out there uh, on Reddit. Reddit. There's actually like a page kind of dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. And other theories amongst investigators and cold case people like my brother and I, we like to look into cold cases a lot. Yeah. You know, we just had that cold case that was uh, completely solved of the bodies they found in metal drums down at Bear Brook State Park in New Hampshire a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. And, and they figured they figured out, you know, what happened and who killed them and who put them there or whatever. But that was a huge mystery, like for decades. Huge mystery, right? Yeah, it's nuts. But, it was also but, a scene but, out of Dexter. Yeah, but, but there's a theory that we have a serial killer up here in New Hampshire, uh, and he's very good at very good at what he does, uh, because a lot of people go missing in New Hampshire, and a lot of people end up in rivers in New Hampshire. So, so even though you know it's a really cool state, you know people need to be aware. Like, <laughs> like, like, like strange things happen here. Yeah, you know, there's something weird about it up here. But, but the whole serial killer thing, I mean. The first documented serial killer in the United States came from New Hampshire. Really? Yeah, H.H. H. The... H. H. Holmes. I didn't realize he was from New Hampshire. Holy okay, God. so one of my customers... Him in his crazy murder house. Yes, one of my customers owns the house he grew up in. Whoa, that's yeah. wild. And everything, yeah. think about it also, like just New England itself, man. Like it's so the history is old and like you got like HP Lovecraft coming out of Connecticut. Yeah. It's this area, man. <laughs> yeah. Something you about know, the Atlantic or the Gulf yeah, Stream New, or something. Yeah, New England is an, is one of the oldest parts of the country, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, you know, I mean, this is you know, everybody said, Well, the revolution started in Pennsylvania and this and that. Well, not really, it kind of started in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. That's where the shot round the world happened and, uh, you know, conquered in Lexington. But, yeah. but anyways, I mean, this is an old part of the country yeah. and, 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 you know, we don't know, you know, there was a heavy native American population here, you know, and, and this is where the theory of why the Bridgewater triangle is cursed is from them killing off a bunch of Indians and killing off an Indian chief. In a, in, oh yeah. In the yeah. Indian, that yeah, is the, the Indian chief story. Yeah. Cursed it. Yeah. Yeah, so do you remember the so, name of that chief? Uh, no, but we can find it real quick. We could. It's a long one, and it's kind of it's obtuse. You don't, you know, it's not doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you know, uh, it's definitely something that I want to look into more. You know, and sometimes I'm like uh, a I little hesitant, a little hesitant to look into things like that, but. Uh, yeah. Well, there, yeah, there's a lot of history here with all that. It's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, but there was a chief there during the Indian Wars, and it is the Hockamock Swamp Wildlife Management Area. I feel like, if I'm remembering correctly, the same chief is talked about as a normal chief, but then in other stories, he's talked about as like a giant. I want to say the name starts with an M, but Lord. Well, knows. the tribe was the Wampanoag Indian tribe. That sounds familiar. Yeah. 
Uh, just looking it up quick here. Uh, they also have some uh, pretty cool monster tales. Yeah. Do 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 do. Yeah, the Wampanoag the Wampanoag Indians were some of the Indians that interacted with the early colonists. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but th- but something happened uh, during King Philip's War. It became strategic base of operations for Chief Metacomic. That's what it was. It wasn't Metacomic to launch assaults upon early English settlers. Mm-hmm. Well, you know they got tired of his shit and they hunted him down and they killed him. Oh, but I guess in the meantime he uh, he cursed the whole area. Oh yeah, so here's the other thing. Uh, so they call them puck wedgies. Puck wedgies, yeah. Puck wedgies, um, yeah. Puck wedgies, uh, which is part of another name Indian. for it too. That was even creepier. I, I have a book, not here. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it was all about these New England Native American folklore giants and stuff. It's awesome. Reminded me a lot of the frost giant stuff from like the you know Scandinavian legends and stuff. Yeah, well, I think you'll find that. Skeletal remains of giants had been discovered in New England. Uh, really? co- co- of course, you know that they, they suppress that. Like the Smithsonian Institution, like, oh, well, we'll take them bones for safekeeping, right? right. Uh, and then they disappear. England. And then they disappeared. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, we had so many Indian tribes here, you know, mostly Algonquin, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Mo- Mohicans, Mohawks, stuff like that. Uh, some good Indians and some not so friendly Indians, right? Uh, during the whole Especially French and Indian War, white Europeans, yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that's something we definitely got to put on our to do list is to go check that out. Yeah, do some uh, live site stuff. And yeah. you know what else is cool? I don't know how brave we all are or claustrophobic, but you know, there's a lot of caves in our area too. And you know, it's interesting when you think about the Bridgewater Triangle and a lot of weird things happening along the Appalachian Trail. And you think a lot of these cave systems, when you look at the cave systems under the United States, there's a lot that's right in that area. And it breaks branches off down south into the what are the mammoth cave systems that literally connect the rest of the, the country. Yeah, the and mammoth those, cave some of those system have never been explored. Yeah, the mammoth cave system is the one uh, in, the ones in Kentucky, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. which is some really crazy shit happens in Kentucky. Yeah, a lot of you know? goblin talk, a lot of encounters of that nature, stuff like that. I guess the U.S. Geological Survey said that that section in Kentucky has an abnormally high magnetic something, some magnetic anomaly that's hmm. there. And the only other place there is in North America that's like that, I want to say, is either in Alaska or it's in up, you know, the Canadian provinces like uh, the Yukon or uh, Northwest Territories or something like that, which is you know just before you get to Alaska. Yeah. So, so something definitely going on there. You know, uh, to plug another kind of a uh, an older podcast, this guy, and I and 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 I'm sorry, I can't remember his name at the moment, but uh, but he did a he did a podcast series called the Penny Royal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that tells about some of the strange happenings and accounts of some of the things that happened down near those mammoth caves, w- which brings us to, you know, talking about giants yeah. or talking about talk about hollow earth, which is a big one for me. I love hollow earth. Yes, that's uh, right. And you got all these caves like like these caves are kind of uncharted. Like a lot of these caves are uncharted. They don't know where they go. And there's a lot of legends of, uh, you know, like the Mayans say their gods came up and brought them down under the earth and to, to like rescue them from the end of the world or whatever. There's yeah. a lot of talk like that. Yeah, that's yeah. They brought them there for the cataclysms. Yeah. yeah and I which... mean, mainstream science even admits in certain areas like there's massive caverns with like. It would look from our perspective like an ocean. Uh-huh. Because of how massive these caverns, when they're filled with water, look, you know, yeah. massive yeah. lakes. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And when you hear some of the accounts, like even Admiral Byrd and things like that, that, you know, talks about the hollow earth. Well, he also talks about lands beyond the poles, too. But that's that's kind of a separate deal. But but uh, but, you know, how uh, inner earth has its its own sun, you know, sun type thing, even though it's not a sun or whatever. You know, uh, plants grow there. People live there. 
you know, whatever they are, you know, could be reptilians, could be the ant people, the ant people that the Hopi talk about. Well, and didn't, like that. didn't Admiral right. Byrd's journal talk about them as if they were the like these tall whites and they called themselves Aryans? Yeah. So so what you're talking about is when he allegedly flew into the North Pole. Oh, that's the North Pole. Yeah, that was the North Pole. Which, that's curious. Which, that's which, very which, curious, along with Box Saga, that I know I've been freaking out. Okay, about yeah, before. yeah. So we're gonna talk about that sometime. Definitely, we will. Because I just started getting into that. But yeah, so Admiral Byrd in his diary, alleged diary, it's never been vetted to prove that it was his diary. Yeah. He has this whole account of how he was flying over the North Pole, and he was, you know, according to his instruments, he was it was like fifteen hundred miles past that. Like, like, I don't know how his plane could even fly that far, to be honest, to think yeah. logistically and how much fuel did this guy have on his plane. But anyway, so we flew into this. He's flying over ice and stuff. Now, all of a sudden, he's flying into more of a temperate zone Tropical, where he sees yeah. trees and, and he sees woolly mammoths and he sees this. Now, all of a sudden, these other crafts are kind of fall, like flying next to his plane and they take control of his plane bring him in and land him inside the hollow earth. And then he goes and talks to their leader and the leaders, uh, you know, and of course I'm just kind of summarizing, right, you know, right. people can, people could go out there and look this up, but he talks to their leader and the leader gave him basically this, uh, you know, an ass chewing said, listen, this is what I want you to go back and tell your leaders, you know, what they're doing right now is basically it's not going to work. Like the use of nuclear weapons and all these things, which goes again to how we hear about extraterrestrials or aliens or UFOs. You know, maybe they're not from out of space. Maybe they're from below us. Like, or like we don't know. Like, we don't know be. that. Right. And, and telling him they need to stop doing the whole war thing, killing each other. You really need to start living your life properly. You got to get rid of your nuclear weapons. You just and every time you start to do something, we intervene to keep mm -hmm. you from doing that. Right. How many stories have we heard about uh, nuclear missile bases uh, being shut down? Yeah, there's a that coincides video. With, with UFO sightings. You know, yeah, what there's I mean? a video. There's video footage I saw in some documentary years ago of a little object flying near a missile, and you know, all of a sudden that missile falls out of the sky. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen those videos. Yeah, they're not that old either. I want to say maybe ten years ago, fifteen years ago, or something yeah, like maybe. that. Yeah. Well, this I think the one that I'm referring to is definitely Yeah, I mean, I guess it could be like 90s, could be. I don't know, maybe even more yeah. recently, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess what we're talking about is like like things that we'd like to explore for our shows, right? Sure. Yeah. And I know this is just kind of a little rap session for for us. Yeah, we we're really, having fun. We didn't really have the any audience will like we, it. Yeah, we didn't have any real set agenda, but no, no, but you know, but but if people that are just sitting there, you know, trying to find the best sitcom to watch at night, spent some of their time researching some of these things or listening to some of our shows, they're gonna be they're gonna realize they're like there's a lot of mister mysterious things that happen mm -hmm. that that we're trying to come up with the explanation for. Right. You know, we're not professional scientists, but I think I think I think we do a pretty good job, though. You know, like <laughs> don't, you talk. Don't put me like, in a lab trying to do any science right now. Or anything, but I mean, but... you talk about the box saga and, and then and then and then, you know, Tartaria, hmm. the mud flood. What is it with all these buildings that they're excavating down and the buildings go down another two stories or at least another story? Yeah, and all the shit with the world's fairs, and and then yeah, the crystal. You know, palaces. my buddy Casey from Golden Gate Star Four Command turned me on to the whole idea about the uh, the city beautiful movement, which, um, yeah, it's this beautification movement from right around the same exact time that we're talking about late eighteen hundreds. It's, it's all it all fits in, and we see that behavior in many many time periods of of that when resets happen we're seeing them right now you know yeah so okay it's okay. interesting so you're talking about like what i used to you know me and my friend sean were talking about this the other day uh, who's collaborating with me on some other uh things for the show excellent uh the right now he he, he says that we're going through a de-evolution process mm 
in that in that it's a hundred year cycle. Like every hundred years, everything has to be reset. Mm. So, so in some of the, some of these buildings that you know, and Matt T is 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 really getting into this, mm. like like pretty heavy duty, yeah. and uh, and and I mean, it's right there in front of your face. I mean, they just dug down another story, and there's the original entrance to this building. Right. No one okay, so these buildings weren't built like when you said they were built. These buildings were built maybe a hundred or two hundred years prior to that. So, so what else are we being lied about? Like, like one of my favorite subjects is like forbidden history, Me too. hidden ar- hidden archaeology, and all these things because you know we're always like, you know, I'm a firm believer that the society that we live in, or or you know, the timeline that we're being told of that we were taught in school. Uh, is way off. Yeah, like, like like that was just part of the school's indoctrination process on us, mm-hmm. right? Oh no, that building was built in you know eighteen sixty two or whatever. Okay, like like the technology today exists to do that, but there's no way that that building was built like that. One of the most couple, bizarre in a couple of months, right? Not One of the most happen. bizarre giveaways or I don't know, suspicious things about those photos in that time period with those magnificent buildings being built um, is that every, everything else is like horse and buggy and the streets are dirt and filled with horse shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, But yet they had the artistic prowess and the engineering mastery to build unbelievable i just yeah there's a lot to it there that's Andy, it doesn't strange. make any sense absolutely not because well, if you, the other it, thing it, about like the city beautiful idea and the world's fairs like being fronts and things like that the same goes for the fact that we all accept that there's a new york city underneath new york city that's just part of normal information like some people may not know it but it's more like a you just did you know it's just a thing Oh yeah, that's like the old New York. We're like, well, what? Wait, what? What do you mean the old New York? How did it get that? What? what it just built. We built it on top of it. At one point, what? I, I mean, maybe I'm just looking into a frivolous point, and I haven't done my research on it. But that, to me, echoes the same shit that we're finding with these buildings that have entire stories underground that have entrances that lead to dirt. That until we excavate it, you know what I mean? It just doesn't add up. Yeah, and if you did this much work building these beautiful buildings, why are your streets mud? Right, right. Why, why are your streets not, you know... That's what it, I'm saying. It, using just, or pavers, or concrete, or, you know, early, what, whatever asphalt would have been. Right. right. No, you got this great big, huge cathedral, and a uh, horse and buggy pulls up next to it, and, and you know, going through horse shit, and yeah. mud that's six inches deep, or a foot deep of mud. Now, come on. <laughs> that, that just, it doesn't make sense. It really? doesn't make sense that they would have built it that way. Uh, Chicago was another example. Absolutely, uh, the same thing another that's going fair. on with New York. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I, so I guess we just get into talking about mysteries that we want our listeners to kind of get into. Uh, hey, give them a mean, little preview of what we're going to get into. This is also like, I don't know, a good way to not necessarily get kicked off YouTube and get you know more of an audience interested in this stuff because like. This they don't normally censor a lot of this kind of stuff, at least from my perspective, because I think they just have faith that enough people don't buy these conspiracies. And I mean, they're more focused on all the COVID frantic frenzy that's going on. You know, it's that's that's where it is. But like this kind of stuff in the box saga and thing, no, no no one's really censoring anything about this. You know, they there's not a lot of discreditors out there talking about this stuff i don't know it's interesting and you know i i like to pepper in a little bit of box saga now just just a little bit yeah because because um it's hard to talk about it directly and it's hard to cover the whole thing because it's the story of how our language kind of came about it's very it makes no sense to just say that but it's hard to talk about altogether but there's one part of it that explains away atlantis and it's the altlantis the and it's the time where all land ice all land was ice and it's about this time where the 
Scandinavian areas with all the hot springs and the volcanic activity, I guess, at the time near Finland and Helsinki didn't freeze during this ice age. They were able to continue on in these underground areas in the north, uh, evolving and creating more advancements and everything. And millions of whatever, this is a crazy alternate history. Uh, after all that passes and the snow starts to melt, they claim this is the second Ragnarok where the ice melts. So that would be our flood story. But after that, of course, in every flood story, there's these tall white people with blazing blue eyes, call it star people, the shiny ones, the Anunnaki, every culture, Mayans, they all describe them in this fashion, coming down with their better technology to pass on these messages and guide people through this awful time and it's just very interesting when you got this weird one family passed down story the box saga just talking about all this and at first it's like okay you can kind of maybe suggest they made up a few things and connected dots that never existed this alt lantis someone could have made that up but once you dig into the box saga and you start to see all the phonetic relationships to our modern languages to this supposed root language that comes from this one family that's been passing down humanity's story since the very beginning it's wild it's nuts. And that's where I'll leave it because I think that's the best way I've described it to my audience too. So I think that's a nice little tidbit there. And there's more coming on that. You'll hear from a future guest of mine, Joachim Hogstrom from Sweden, who's been close to a lot of people uh, in this direct box saga story surrounding this family and everything. Um, yeah. And I've heard some of his work. Yes. Uh, before. Yeah. On. Very, very, very knowledgeable. I want to say on, he was on higher side, uh, higher side chats. Uh, a he, while back. I don't, he might've been, I haven't, I didn't catch I know that Jim Chesner, another person that was involved in box soccer was on higher side chats and, and Yakum has been on interverse and unslaved with Michael Tessarian. Uh, a lot of good programs, but you know, box saga gets talked about, but again, it's so big yeah. that it's, it's hard to, yeah, you'd have to do a whole series on it, which is the plan, actually. It's yeah, funny yeah, you you'd have that. to do a whole, you'd have to do a whole series on it. Uh, well, but we what's will interesting, be actually, because Yakim, Dan, Dan Anaki, Dan from Rising from the Ashes, and myself yeah. will be doing something going forward. We're just not we haven't worked out the kinks yet, but it's yeah, coming. yeah, and that'll be very, very interesting for sure. And mm -hmm. but you talk about these tall what what we would call the Nordics, right? Right. You, you uh, have an even we even have an alien species in the UFO community, right? Yeah, the yeah. tall so, whites, the Nordics. Yeah, the Nordics. So, you know, when the Mayans talk about their god, their god is a tall white god with Lazing long azure with long, blue eyes, long hair, long blonde hair, and blue eyes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, actually, you know, when I had gone down to Chichen Itza in Mexico to tour <gasps> the uh, to tour the Jealous. Mexican the Mayan ruins. Oh my God. It was, it was something I always wanted to do. And it was amazing. Oh man. The Props tour to guide, the tour guide on the bus. I brought up that question and he just shut that down. Didn't even want to discuss it. Really? Nothing. No, didn't want to discuss it that. Oh no, no. Their, their God was a uh, Quetzalcoatl was a yeah. serpent, was a serpent God or whatever. And that I, and I doesn't said, know his own history. I should and, do the uh, tour guide or you should. So, <laughs> so I uh, I just left it alone. I said, okay, Fair cool. Enough. I said, okay, cool. Obviously, you don't want to listen to my version of it uh, because I, I, I used to read a lot about the Mayans when I was a younger kid and, and still do today. But uh, because that, that was one of the first rabbit holes I ever jumped down was where'd all these Mayan Indians disappear? Where'd Dude, they go? Me too. Where did they go? That's wild See, that we have that in common. Yeah. I, where did they I go? They had to go somewhere. That. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. It was like the number one question. Did you ever read a series of books uh, about that by any chance? It was fictionalized, but it was about Kukul Khan and the pyramids down there and aliens and shit like that. I don't know. Yeah. It caught my eye. It was a series called Domain. And it's, I want to go back and, and probably read that again because it was all prophecy and 
everything happening now that happened back then with the Mayans and stuff. There's probably some cool clues in there. But anyway, I sidetracked. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? So 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 that's a question because the the, the stories about these these tall Nordic type gods are all over the world. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, these are all these are these are not unique to Scandinavia. I mean, these are all over the world, right? Well, what? Uh, yes, they are. Yeah. And when you talk about the Anunnaki, did you hear the latest? There was a an alleged whistleblower. I'm still trying to look into it from the Pentagon that says, "Yeah, we know that the Anunnaki are coming back." And, and we don't know what we're going to do about it. Yeah. And, and, and it all has to do with Planet X, Wormwood, Nibiru, Nibiru whatever you want to call it. But this is where the Anunnaki allegedly Marduk. came from. And, uh, and Nibiru is on an elliptical orbit in our solar system. And it comes around, what, every, uh, I forget how many thousands of years. I can't remember the, the I think it's, it was very oddly close to the amount of years in a great year in astrology uh it's like 20 i think it was like twenty six thousand years yes yeah, I, I i always used to round it off to thirty thousand years but yeah i think you're yeah, I something think you're more way accurate up there. there but you know the theory is that the anunnaki of course is, is who came into sumeria and this is where the human race was was uh juiced up so to speak with the, a little bit of their dna to turn regular hominids into human beings, right? Yeah, I mean, then, without, without getting into it that deep. Oh, hey, but, why not, right? But, I mean, I heard recently that the Sumerians borrowed those stories from cultures even older than them. You know? Yeah, well, that could be, yeah. But but it all comes down to the Anunnaki. And, and now you got this person uh, talking that, uh, you know, they, they, the government is aware that the Anunnaki are coming back. And we've been hearing about the return of Planet X now for, I mean, it's pretty a pretty hot topic. I mean, it's kind of cooled off lately, but it was a pretty hot topic in the last five or six years, right? The whole Planet X story. Yeah, well, there was some uh, scientists talking about it, right? In yeah. Germany. Yeah. yeah. They were saying that there literally is something out there in that elliptical pattern that's causing massive gravity pull or yeah. something. Yeah. Well, you see the pictures of some of these people that can, they show pictures of the two suns, the yeah, two the suns. Dwarfs. Yeah. Yeah, and the theory is that Nubiru is actually part of its own it's its own little planetary system mm-hmm. with its own dwarf star. Right. You know? Yeah. Which, which is kind of interesting. But so I mean you think about it, we're our Milky Way galaxy is being invaded by the Andromeda galaxy. Is it the Andromeda galaxy, I think? Slowly uh, wanna, but surely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's Andromeda. Uh, oh, who knows? Yes, it's Andromeda. Yeah. So it's interesting to think that maybe like another system could be kind of just interacting with ours, perhaps, or something like that. Could know? that be the reason for the, the weird climate, the weird change in the weather in the last 10 or 15 years? Maybe this, com- yeah. this coming into our system. I mean, that's a theory. You know, this this all comes from Zachariah Sitchin, who wrote the Earth Chronicles, that series of books. Right. And uh, right here. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. So. So uh, kind of a tough read. Some of those books are kind of tough to read, but but very interesting. And then you got Eric Van Donegan, who who, who has a lot of similar uh, the ancient astronaut theory and stuff like that. So this is all stuff that guys like you and me, you know, yeah, we'll get on our shows and and we're kind of giving COVID a rest, like like you said, uh, everybody's kind of got COVID fatigue, right? Uh, yeah. But but I can't help to want to try to get information out there and open up people's eyes. But yeah. I think it was you and I that talked about. Like, like we've been pounding this into people's heads for over a year. And if they don't want to listen to us or believe us at this point, like, like basically you just can't be saved. Whatever. We're just, we're just, we're just going to move on. We're going to move on and let, let whatever happens happens. You know, it's difficult, you know, it's, it's hard. And I, like I was saying before, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, no, what I was saying is that this is why, you know, we want to start getting on subjects like Tartaria the box saga, uh, you know, even strange happenings in New England or whatever, you know, I mean, us New England podcasters, we need to kind of get together on that. But, but, you know, maybe we can give, maybe we can give our listeners something a little bit different besides COVID, maybe something a little bit interesting, you know, Hey, yeah. we, we did a, we did our ghost investigation here last night. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about that on the show tomorrow. Uh, awesome. Buckley, my co-host Buckley's brother, Kellen, 
uh, runs Lone Star, Lone Star Paranormal Research out of Texas, and he happens to be up visiting. And he's agreed to he agreed to come up and do an investigation and and come on the show tomorrow night. So so that's something I'm kind of looking forward to. That's great. Yeah, we're going to talk about kind of what he does or whatever, uh, and that's going to be interesting. So that's going to be something different. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Besides just all this to... obvious bullshit that's happening on it happening in the world right now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've accepted. I kind of tried to make a statement like a month ago, saying I'm not going to talk about it at all, and. I would have loved to have been able to just completely stick to that. But I mean, it's, it's, we're talking around it or we're talking about it sometimes. And I, I think I'm, what I really am trying to do is just, I just don't want to be a headline chaser with like more fear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when yeah. we already kind of know what's coming down the pipe, especially considering we've already, like you said, kind of accepted we're not waking anybody else up unless they want to hear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like at this point. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. You know, it's like I told Buckley too, cause he kind of wants, you know, he suggests that we get off of it too or whatever. And, yeah. and I'm like, well, you know, it's, 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 it's relevant. Like, and if something new is coming up, I mean, to me, it's just so crystal clear. The agenda. It's very yeah. crystal clear to me that I try to convey that to other people. Yeah. They don't want to hear it. <laughs> they don't want to hear it no yeah. no i'm going to do what dr fauci tells me what to do mm-hmm. and the cdc and the who and everybody and it's like okay let's 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 uh, i like history let's go back into the history of these guys that's, that's how my they, point let's see how yeah. they've done this before don't you yeah. get that they're just doing it again so yeah. whatever and not not even just the 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 nazi comparison like literally everything we talk about in the conspiracy world you know it's all been done a million times it's yeah. all just the same patterns repeating yeah and people and, suck it up every time too yeah uh, and that's the sad part yeah but i think what i'm learning i think is that every one of us collectively as a people as humans we just have a lot of scars in our human collective past and i think just like the individual who doesn't go inward and doesn't do the work and doesn't heal themselves we all are trying to solve the world and and shout it from the rooftops or those of us who are dead asleep in our eyes and aren't facing it you know it's we all need to kind of do the work for ourselves and then we can kind of turn it outward. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think we're all, we're all kind of dealing with, um, yeah, like this dark cultural fatigue and maybe a lot of it's orchestrated. I don't know, but I think there's a silver lining. And I think if we're patient, we do some good work on a personal level, all of us, maybe I'm talking about myself big time. You know what I mean? But I, I need to meditate more. I want to do more. I, I want to stop telling myself and my wife and whoever that, well, I have no time for that. I have no time for that. I have no time for that. Well, I got to do this. I got to do that. You know? <laughs> yeah. I guess that's it. You know? Well, don't you find though, that that is exactly what we're having to say all the time now. Like, what? like, you nobody, you like, we don't have time for that. Yeah, there's no time. Because for we're so inundated just trying to live our everyday life, you know, support our families, pay our bills, do stuff like that. And, and, and it's like, you know, like the simple things that our wives ask us to do, mm-hmm. you know, just a simple one example, you know, it's like, oh, can you do this, this, and this? And it's like, oh, okay, well, can I find time to do that? Because I got an X, Y, Z on my plate. I got this <laughs> going on. I got that going on. You know, and sometimes, you know, life just needs to slow down. And I think that's where we are right now. And, and I and I don't mean us. I mean everybody. Yeah, we all need to you slow see down. it. You see it how people drive. I mean, people did people forget how to drive in the last couple of years? Because everybody <laughs> drives like an idiot out there. Everybody's in a hurry. Everybody, they're, they're, they're doing things that are going to cause people to get hurt. I mean, it's just, a, that's just another example. Slow down, slow your life down. Mm. Take care of what's important. And I think when something big does happen, I mean, I'm a firm believer that something's coming down the pike. I really am. That something big is going to happen, be it some type of grid takedown, internet takedown, which would coincide with that, of course. 
and uh, lack of communication. And it's all going to go back uh, for who knows how long where people just relying on them and themselves and their neighbors to help each other. Well, we've been pre-programmed to accept Terminator as our future, basically. Yeah. The machines are taking over. And we'll, yeah. and you and me, we, we said that we'd at least you know, do a little bit. We're kind of running low on time. It's pretty late now over here in our neck of the woods. But, oh, yeah. Um, you know, the, the fourth industrial revolution, the WEF and everything like that's the thing. I don't really want to talk about all the crazy headlines, but the the things behind it, like the organizations and what they really are, and what they always have been. How do we relate these past ancient events as the originator, as this archetype for what we're seeing now, because that's how we learn to fight our enemies. Just as, as you, the individual has to, you know, learn from its past, we have to, you know, see where our enemies coming from too. And I hate to see, even say the word enemy, you know what I mean? Because I, I don't know even what to make of what's happening out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, when you kind of think of like where the future could possibly go, I mean, there may be some good things that could come of it, but, but it all comes down to them wanting more control. Right. And, and here's why it was so hard for me to get back into the groove when I came back from being up in the woods. Cause when you're up there, you don't think about a lot of things right. like, like you think, like you think about certain things, like, like what you need to get done just that day. Like, like we need to get from point A to point B without crashing, mm. breaking down, whatever, you know, get back before the bar closes. I mean, this is all that really mattered. Like, like nothing else mattered. Right. And you think, and you see these old camps or these old houses that people just, you know, sometimes they only go to them for a week or two out of the year, you know, and I look at it like I could live here. Like I could move right in here. And, you know, go to the big city that's uh, 30 or 40 miles away, you know, once every few weeks to get your supplies. Yeah. You know, or what I'm the so old time is, what the old time is called your sundries. Got to get your sundries. Right. You know, your, your milk and your sugar and your butter or whatever. <laughs> uh, and you hook up with this guy to get your meat and this guy to get your vegetables. And, and what service can you provide? Well, I can weld. I can fix things. I can do. You know, all kinds of things. So then you end up going on the barter system and things like that. You kind of wonder if that's maybe not a bad place for us to end up, even if it's just for, you know, a couple of years that people can mentally reset. Right. You know, they and talk, just... we talk about the great reset. Maybe we do need a reset, but not the reset that these people have planned for us. Yeah. I mean, you say great awakening, you immediately get associated with Q, but you know, I'm uh, going to take, I'm yeah. going to take that one back. Cause I like that term, you know, the great awakening, like a big oh, I do too. I do too. Yeah. wake up call. Um, and of course, uh, you know me, I love talking about the mimicry that they place on everything. And that's the biggest one that we, that great reset. It's, it's the answer that everybody thinks that they've been asking for forever but it's just slightly off to the side of actually what they really need. It's yeah. just this distraction over here on, on the side of the road, you know? What's really scaring, scaring me is the amount of people that are out there that would embrace this great recess, great reset, sorry. Yeah. You know, people that don't walk around with any cash in their pocket. Oh, I got my card. That's all I need. Yeah. Now I'm going to rely on the electricity. I'm going to rely on the bank to be open. I'm going to rely on the internet to send the information back and forth. So when I go to the store to use my credit card, uh, they can communicate with the credit card company, credit, you know, or my bank, if it's a debit card or whatever, and this transaction can go through. They don't understand how easily that can be disrupted. Yeah. It's like a reawakening you know? almost like, you know, you get the, like the matrix set up where like you find out it's all the matrix. Right. And then I don't know. It's like, when it got real the past couple of years, when it's like, it wasn't just predictive programming and movies anymore and gearing us up for it. It was like coming to fruition. Yeah. It, it was like another shock to the system. It was like, Oh shit, this isn't cosplay LARPing anymore. This is what all of us free thinkers have been talking about forever for a Shit. long time for a long time we've damn been it i didn't want to deal with this 
<laughs> you know, sometimes, Andy, I think that if I've been preparing my whole life for some major apocalypse to happen, you know, that's just my mindset. You know, Dude, they're all my favorite movies. I always play survival craft video games. Meanwhile, my wife hates all of those movies, stays completely away from them. They're too negative and all that. And I used to give her shit. And now I'm just like, she is the superior one in that regard. Yeah. You know, and she's yeah. like, she's doing this cool work about like, it's kind of like hippy dippy called like the inner child work, but I'm into it. It's pretty cool to me. It sounds like the ego, the demiurge. It's all the cool stuff that I'm into. So I watch it with her and I thought to myself, maybe if she goes through all this inner child work, she'll be cool with watching horror movies with me. And my next thought was her voice saying, maybe if you go through this work, you won't want to watch them anymore. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, you know, there's a certain, certain genres of movies that I just really like. And, uh, Hell yeah. you know, you know, and horror is one of them. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, not to, uh, you know, you know, Stephen King, who's a total leftist, but whatever. So uh, I'm a huge, huge, I'm a huge fan of his work, right? Mm -hmm. So on Epic's channel, they have this series called Chapel Wait, and it's based on his book, Jerusalem's Lot. Oh, Whoa. my God. You see, that's the kind of horror I like. I like, like, period horror. Love I like Jerusalem's period horror. Lot. Like, uh, uh, you know, mid 1800s, even even earlier than that, you know, even yeah. revolutionary civil war stories that take place then And this story takes place in the 1850s. And uh, it's like pre civil war. Uh, but it's it's a scary story. It's a it's a really cool show. That's you, what know, I, you know, I think it's up to six episodes right now. I'm going to have to has, look into that. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. always mentioned to like, uh, you know, when I was first trying to turn my sister onto Stephen King, because me and my dad love Stephen King. So I would tell her about Salem's Lot because, she, you know, it's an interesting point when you find out how creative an author can get with all of his stories. You know what I mean? Because with Salem's Lot, a lot of people have heard of Salem's Lot. It's the epic vampire novel that Stephen King wrote, you know, but Salem's Lot is one novel. And then you have Jerusalem's Lot, which is that short story yeah. that became that show you're talking about. Chapel Wait was the place that the yeah. character's writing from. Yeah. And then you have another short story that came in another series of short stories called One for the Road. And it's all about a truck breaking down in the middle of a blizzard and a bar right next to this place called Jerusalem's Lot. And I just, I always was fascinated by how he would do that. He would kind of just interlace all his characters and everything. He's okay. So we talked, that way. we talked about this. I talked about this with somebody on another show. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we were talking about Stephen King and certain authors that we liked, Stephen King's stories are all intertwined. Yeah. Most of right? them. Yeah. They're all intertwined. Like, like, like you say, Salem's lot is intertwined with Jerusalem's lot, which is intertwined with on the road or uh, the uh, one for the road or whatever yep, that series. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, and then you have the other ones, you have the dark tower series, which is tied into uh, hearts in Atlantis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's the other one from a Buick eight and all these stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're all intertwined as well. Right. It's all based on the dark tower in the little offshoots. How, how can you as a writer sit there and make this shit happen? But he does it like, it's like, he's like a genius. Like he is, I mean, he is a genius. Despite him being like my favorite author growing up and everything. I, I do kind of wonder if, you know, some of someone in our, our community has already, you know, ripped apart all of his novels into symbolism and predictive programming. Who knows? Right? Oh yeah. No, that's, I mean, think done. about yeah. Dr. Think about Dr. Sleep, man. Yeah. I mean, for those of you who've seen that movie, oh, I can't which, watch which, it. which is the shining part two. Right. Right. And there's right, so that's much tied shit into Stanley the Kubrick and everything. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, all that. Da, da, right. da, 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 da. We could go for four more hours, but Ron, we're yeah. going to wrap yeah. up because here in new England, it's getting late and I'm going to bed. Yeah, and we, and we never did get to talk about the free state movement, but we could do that again. That's all right. You know, honestly, it just I mean, I've had Etienne de la Boetti on to talk about this and, and 
it's just a, a beautiful thing. You know, I think everyone should go check out, uh, what is it? Um, free state. Yeah. F S P. I think it's F uh, F S it's F S P dot org. Isn't it? Yeah. It's F S P dot org. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. So yeah, go check it out. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Ron, tell thing. tell my people if they already don't know, I mean, come on, but yeah, tell them where they can find you. Okay. Well, you can find me on Instagram at Ron from new England. And uh, the Wicked Planet podcast, also on Instagram. And, uh, you know, we have the, I'm the, the, the host of the Wicked Planet podcast. Uh, we're doing about one show a week right now. You know, we might ramp that up a little bit. I know that our schedules is going to start getting heavier. But, but if you want to find me, you know, of course, uh, Deep Share and my uh, Wicked Planet and a lot of us are all on Alt Media United which is a big podcast co-op that if you don't want to listen on an app, you can just go on to altmediaunited.com and find us all right there. But we're everywhere. We're all at all the usual suspects, right? Uh, right. If we use Anchor, we're on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Google, Podbean, and the list goes on. So mm-hmm. so we're pretty easy to find. So come check out my show. Uh, right. And, uh, you know, and come follow me on Instagram. You know, I'm, I'm working on that. I need to start being a little bit more active. And I say that all the time, but there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah, it's like when I text you, hey, are you working? Are you on break or whatever? You know, and then and then we're like we get talking. And you're like, oh, dude, I got to get back to work. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, it's insane, man. Life's crazy. Yeah, dude. but hey, Andy, we're all doing uh, a pretty good job. <laughs> oh yeah, so, Andy, I want to thank you for having me on. I know that we, you know, <clears throat> we've been trying to get together to just do a shoot the shit show for a long time now. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, you know, I hope people find it interesting or whatever. It kind of, kind of dives into our our personal, personal lives just a little bit. You yeah, know, other than our than our podcasting life. Uh, which which I'm totally cool with. I'm an open book. If anybody wants to know what's going on with me, just be be, be prepared for some pretty wild stories. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So I had a good time, All uh, right, man. and uh, and we'll get together. We'll get together real soon again. I'm sure oh, yeah. we'll be hitting like a you know a six podcast swapcast here anytime in the next few weeks or whatever. Yeah, you know, those just, those just like get time. dumped on us with a two day notice. Oh yeah. And you know, late October, I'm, I'm not sure. I think I'm trying to do like a live event for Halloween or something like that. Yep. If you feel yep. like coming on and telling some ghost stories and some Bigfoot stories, hell yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, well, figure we're going to have some, we're going to have some ghost stories tomorrow night on the wicked planet. Yeah. Uh, don't know if the episode will be out tomorrow. Everybody knows us. Uh, we do the turn and burn. We record. I listened. I spot check it. I release it. There so, you go. because I get people ask me, is the show coming out Wednesday or Thursday? How come there's no show this week? Oh my God, people. <laughs> I promise I'm going to get back on track. And I bat him off with a stick, but, man. <laughs> but, but yeah, Andy, thank Loyal you for listeners. having me. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate that. Thank you for coming on, Ron. And it's always good to see you and good to talk to you, man. Yeah. So, everybody, go check out the Wicked Planet podcast and look forward to a lot of fun shit this year and next year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We're here for a while, so we're not going anywhere. Yeah. All right, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Deep Share Podcast. If you want to hear more, then hit that subscribe button. Follow me on all the social places. And remember, think for yourself, but don't always believe what you think. Till next time. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, that's his carrier. Enough, I get the point. <laughs> you have meddled with the primal forces of nature. <laughs> and you will atone. What do we know? What do we know? If I know what we know, then I can tell you what we know, and if someone else knows, okay? Ha, 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 ha!